Hi, I'm Lee. I'm a New Zealander who lives in the East Riding of Yorkshire and this is my podcast about my handmade life. You can find me on Instagram as Luli underscore, on Ravelry as Luli and I have an Etsy shop where I sell notions cases and knitting needle cases at Shop Luli on Etsy and you can find links to all of my online places at luli.com. Welcome, it's so nice to be back and chatting with you. Um, last week I went to Yamporium and I had kind of thought that I might do a little vlog or something but I was just so busy um, chatting with some of you and really enjoying myself um, and I didn't get my camera out at all. <laughs> so I have missed a week which is not unusual but um, I'm so pleased to be back and chatting with you and f sharing some time. The first thing I wanted to talk to you about this morning is the Advent Mini Skein Squap that we have had running in the Luli Ravelry group this year. All of the swaps are over and we're now looking forward to the Cal, the Advent Cal that will be running over in the group as well and there is a thread open for that now. Um, you can use whatever advent calendar you have whether you bought one or you've been gifted one or you've put one together yourself you don't have to have been involved in the swap and you can be using the mini skeins to make whatever you like um, blankets or you might join uh, me with socks or whatever it would just be really nice if you popped over let me know and the rest of the group know what your plans are and join in the fun over there I really enjoy my advent calendar. I make socks to wear on Christmas Day and I find that that little tradition in the run up to winter solstice when it can be really dark and gloomy just makes my day a little bit brighter. So I hope, I hope you'll come and join in. Uh, one of the questions that I have got every year from my lovely chum who I swap calendars with is how many rows should she put in each stripe of her socks? So this week I have released my stripometer. Stripometer. My worksheet for calculating how many rows you should do per, per stripe. And I've put them on Ravelry. You can download either my favourite sock pattern or my favourite toe up sock pattern. And the stripometer is attached to that. Um, so you can work through that sheet and work out how many stripes to do each day. Uh, or it is available also. I did a blog post because there seemed to be a lot of people interested in it. So I did a blog post over on my website at luli.com and you can get the stripometer there. It isn't an exact science, you might need to fudge a bit, but it just gives you a good starting point. It's designed to use with my vanilla sock patterns, however, if you do use uh, a different vanilla sock pattern then it will still be helpful for you so yeah if you're interested in that it's free and you can pop over and download it and I hope you'll join in the advent knit along or crochet along or just make along I think last year I wove one of my advent calendars and that was really good fun so whatever you're planning to do please come and join us that would be great this is the sock segment and a couple of weeks ago I just decided willy-nilly to cast on a pair of socks. Well it wasn't quite willy-nilly. Um, I have had I have a friend who has had a really tough year and so I thought that I would make a pair of socks for her. There's a head in the way now. Hey, I can't stroke you all the time actually. If you're going to be like that, you can go over back on the couch. Yeah. So I decided to cast on this pair of socks and I went through my stash and found a skein of yarn that reminded me of her and I'm usually pretty good at guesstimating someone's foot size based on their height. Um, 
but I completely macked it up this time and so I have knitted these socks far too small. I'll still knit my friend another pair of socks but for now I have a spare pair uh, wanting to go in my basket of finished things that have no home. <laughs> Actually, I'm meeting up with another friend for lunch, so perhaps I'll give them to her because I think these will fit her perfectly and I think she'll like the colour as well. This is a yarn that I dyed myself, it was one of my dyeing experiments and I I used some tweed yarn. I use air quotes because to my mind, a yarn that just has a whole lot of nips thrown in with it isn't really tweed. I suppose I think of tweed as um, a fabric or a yarn where someone has taken some the fibres or yarns that have been dyed in a solid colour and mixed them together to make another colour. Throwing a bunch of nips in with some fibre isn't tweed to me and there's a couple of reasons I'm not keen on it apart from that. I always feel like pulling in the bits. They don't feel like they're pulling out the bits. I don't feel like they're well spun into the yarn. And also, having finished the socks, they look like they have pills. They look a bit used, <laughs> even though they're brand new. So I do have, I had another um, skein of yarn that I had used for a hand dyeing experiment and at some point I will knit with that but I wouldn't buy it. It's not for me, I know some other people really like it, it's just not my thing. So that's really exciting, I'm going to take a wee present to give to my luncheoning friend today. I have also started another pair of tube socks and it feels really unexciting to tell you about tube socks because I knit them regularly and a tube is not exactly exciting knitting. This is my birthday sock yarn so there's nothing new here. However, I decided to get back into reading, uh, which, I mean I have a degree in English literature so the fact that I haven't read a book for a couple of years <laughs> is kind of weird but I listen to a lot of audiobooks and a few months ago I went to a friend's book group and I had listened to the book before I went and I realized that actually listening to an audiobook is quite a different experience from reading and you engage your brain in a different way. The others who had read the book had had quite a different impression of it from me and so I felt like that was something that I really I wanted to reignite my excitement for reading and I realized that part of that was actually being able to knit whilst reading so I've just cast on this tube sock and I am reading where have my show notes gone I'm reading the Lido that's how we'd say it in Palmerston North <laughs> I'm reading the Lido by Libby Page and I'm only about 25% of the way through and I'm really enjoying it and I'm finding it quite easy to knit on these as I read the book as well. The only other project that I've been working on is another version of the Buddy the Bear pattern by Crafty Kuka. I had bought some wool felt and I had some left over a beautiful Liberty Tana lawn fabric and I put it aside, I had all of the things to make another toy pattern but I realised that I was put it, putting it off because it had some quite tricky corners and it had quite a lot of pieces and a friend of mine has just had a baby and I really enjoy the Buddy the Bear pattern I love his character, he looks to me he looks optimistic and curious and his, he's just so bright eyed and fun so I thought that I would just go ahead and make another one so that was a really nice project I have packaged him up and he is on his way somewhere in the UK this time and 
I would like to buy more wool felt and just make a whole row of Buddy the Bears. I just, I think it's just a really endearing pattern. And if you haven't made too many toys, then there are some challenging elements. Well, elements that I find challenging. I find putting on the soles of his feet quite tricky. But there is a really good, uh, there is a really good tutorial for that on the Funky Friends website and if I can find it again I shall link it for you. So there are some tricky elements for him but uh, with him but it's and I think the other one that I struggle with a bit is doing the faces but I think with a face faces are naturally imperfect and so if a face turns out to be a little asymmetrical or lopsided I think that actually gives a toy more character. Uh, makes it seem more alive just because like I say living things are asymmetrical so my embroidery skill for faces skills for faces are getting a little better <laughs> slowly but I don't think that I mean that doesn't hold me back from doing faces because they're not meant to be perfect so I've sent that off and yeah, buddy is in transit Today I am wearing my swallowtail shawl and an Aaron cardigan that my mother knitted. So the swallowtail shawl is something that I made quite a while ago uh, on a trip back from New Zealand. I had already knitted a shawl on the way out and from the time I leave my house to the time I get to my parents place it's about a 40 to 50 hour journey and I found I was really surprised to find that knitting a shawl was actually really good plain knitting even when I was really tired and jet lagged. And I think if you have a pattern repeat that is reasonably regular and of course you have the rest row on the back it's very easy just to pick up and put down it's stimulating enough that you don't get bored and you can do it in between watching movies or while you're watching movies and even when I was quite jaded I still felt like I could pick up a row every now and again and do the pattern. So I gifted that shawl to my mum and I decided to pick up, I had had the swallowtail shawl, I think it's an Evelyn Clark shawl, I would had it in my queue for a little while, it's a free pattern, so I decided to pick up some New Zealand yarn while I was out there and to cast on the shawl. And I found a beautiful merino possum, it is Zelana Performer Kauri Fingering, and yeah, it's one that I have worn a lot. Uh, I really do like the colour but I tend to wear it less now that I have the succulent shawl because I feel like that just, it goes with more things in my wardrobe. But I have this on today because this one goes with my Merchant and Mills t-shirt really nicely. Yeah, so that is Swallowtail. If you're thinking about trying a lace shawl I would really recommend it. I really like the, the bubbles at the end, they're really good fun. You finish on a bit of a high, having done all the bubbles. And it's just pretty. So that's all from me for today. I think my focus for this week, I, I try, always try to say three things that I'm going to focus on, but actually I'm finding it really useful just to have one main project at the moment. I don't have a sewing project on the go, that might be famous last words. I am actually working towards a shop update and that usually kills my sewing mojo for other things pretty pretty thoroughly. <laughs> so there may be no sewing until after that is finished. Um, actually I have a, a stack. One of the stacks here works in progress. So my focus is going to be finishing off the Jones card again and I just have to weave in the ends and find buttons for that. Of course I have my sock tube that I'm working on and I think once I finish Jones I'm going to rifle through my bag o' whips. I'm tempted to start something 
but I think I'll rifle through my bag of whips and find something to carry on with there. So it's been so nice to come and have a chat with you again. I'm so pleased that you would come and join me and spend a little bit of time. Please come and join us in the Ravelry group. I really enjoy meeting you there. And oh, if you enjoyed it, you can like and subscribe below. Thank you for coming along and I shall see you next time. Cheerio!